Hi, I'm going to be starting a new series on grammar in the Korean Bible. And in this video will be an introduction. I'm going to talk about the translations that I'll be using, uh, why uh, some of the grammar in the Korean Bible is different, and then give a preview of the grammar of uh, pre-modern Korean as a framework for how to understand uh, the grammar in the Korean Bible. And then also uh, explanation of the format of future videos. So let's get started with number one. So the translations that I will be using. Um, so the first translation is called the New Korean Revised Version. In, in Korean it's called Geo Ge Jung Pan. And this is completed in 1998 and by rough analogy it's kind of like the ESV um, which kind of traces back into the um, King James version so by analogy it's kind of like an older style um, and it has a more formal kind of feel and kind of gives you this kind of old timey feel <clears throat> but I also explain about why I really like this and how it um, gives a different kind of experience of reading the Bible in Korean. Uh, the translation for comparison is called the Revised New Korean Standard Version. And in Korean, it's called the Se Ponyo, which is the new translation. Um, and then the Revised uh, Version was completed in 2004. And so this is by analogy, uh, like the NIV, like a brand new translation. Uh, for the videos, I will be, of course, focusing on this version, the, the, uh, the new Korean uh, revised version, and then I will be uh, using the, uh, the standard version as a point of comparison. And so if you read, uh, I'll just call, um, I'll, I'll call it the Gayo. Um, but if you if you read this, uh, the Korean is going to be quite different and actually quite difficult because uh, so many uh, grammatical forms show up uh, that you're kind of like, what is this? And so uh, there's a couple reasons why it's hard. First, the grammar is not uh, modern uh, Korean grammar. Um, uh, is is not. Uh, used uh, other certain certain elements are um, just put this not here make it more clear and then the second point is that it also uses very formal language and so this is formal in terms of grammar as well as uh, vocabulary uh, so uh, a couple examples of this is for example you would have this form koja which is essentially like yogo in the modern and then so this is an example of something being very formal and this is something that you would learn um, in more spoken Korean uh, and then also in terms of vocabulary um, you would have uh, things like um, for left which is uh, usually when uh, you have which is this is the the Sino-Korean, the Han Zhao for it, or for uh, uh, for right, um, you have Orunjo. Right side, you have Upyeon. So, for example, you may not know what Cha and U are, um, but they're the uh, Chinese version of left and right. And another reason that makes vocabulary hard is that there's a lot of theological terms. Um, they're not commonly used. So it's kind of like um, a lot of new vocabulary that you have to learn as well. So those are some of the reasons uh, that uh, reading the Gayok Kejam Pan is a little bit more complicated. But I think uh, there's a lot of value in that version and something that I've been really uh, able to enjoy. So I want to give you a preview of... Um, of uh, 
uh, pre-modern Korean grammar. Um, so first of all, this is from uh, quite a long period of time, probably about the 17th century to the 19th century. And so, uh, and, and how we know about this grammar is through um, writing of this time in uh, the native Korean script in Hangul. And so, um, and so uh, it's, it helps as, a, as you can think about it as like, um, as kind of a foundation uh, because the, the grammar in the Bible is, is not uh, one to one, but is very similar. And so here's the framework of thinking about, uh, of, of understanding pre-modern uh, Korean is that um, there are only two forms uh, in terms of uh, uh, honorifics. So you have um, a plain and an honorific. And then it's um, broken up into uh, the tenses. So if you were to draw a table, it would look something like this. Um, so you would have, um, you have the plane, and then you have the honorific. You would have then uh, uh, what you call the non-retrospective, which means it's not looking past, and then something called the retrospective, which is another way of thinking about uh, like past tense. And then um, I forgot I forgot something here. Um, and so. Uh, so here is what you have something uh, called the non-conjectural, uh, and this is the conjectural. So it's kind of like um, this is something that is either a guess or something that is to happen, and um, the non-conjectural is um, something that has uh, is a stated fact. And for the retrospective, it is also in this way, uh, non-conjectural. And conjectural, and so uh, there are a lot of different uh, uh, endings that go in here, which I will explain later. And so, in each uh, in each video, we'll kind of use this kind of grid to help understand some of the endings and how they are used. So, lastly, uh, the format moving forward uh, in this series will com uh, consist of uh, three uh, three things. The first is going to be an introduction and um, and uh, introduction of the grammar term, grammar concept, and its, its usage. And then uh, I'll have examples from scripture uh, of uh, each of these uh, forms and its usage. And then third will be uh, uh, one verse. Uh, compared uh, with the um, the Sebanyo, the new uh, the other the uh, Korean standard version, and so uh, then we'll see kind of what's the difference. So this is the format of the upcoming videos, and. Um, so this is actually the um, revised standard Korean version. Sorry here. So uh, that's the format moving forward, and I hope this will be helpful, especially as if you are considering reading the Bible in Korean.